everyone. Welcome to the Education for Next Generation. I am Sravanti introducing you to the class of chemistry and the topic is chemical reactions and equations. We know every, uh, they are like we all are very much familiar with the reactions or the changes which are taking place in our day to day life like the growth of a plant or a tree or the curdling of a milk or sunrise and sunset. All these changes which are taking place around these are categorized into two types one is a physical change and a chemical change. The changes which are observed in our day to day life are of two types one is a physical change and the other one is a chemical change. Now in terms of chemistry we consider these changes as the reactions. The physical changes like sunrise is again getting converted to sunset or summer season is getting converted to winter season or rainy season. Now the chemical change if I take the hydrogen when reacts with oxygen the two gases when they react with each other it get converted in the form of water. Now here a new component is formed from two different components. It is called as a chemical change. Now if you go for the other reaction like methane a gas when reacts with another gas like oxygen a new component is obtained that is carbon dioxide and water. See the or look at this example. In terms of simple color variations a pink color solution when reacts with a green color solution now you observe the changes which are taking place over here. The pink color solution when it is reacting with a green color solution it is getting converted to a purple color solution. Now the change which is observed here with respect to the color is a physical change. Now there is no component which is obtained from this is a physical change. In a chemical change new components are obtained. In a physical change no new component is obtained. Now let us take example of some new substances like sodium sulfate. when reacts with barium chloride the reaction is taking place between the two a new component is obtained giving rise to sodium chloride plus barium sulfate now because the barium sulfate is insoluble it is giving rise to a substance which is called as precipitate. A chemical reaction in terms of a theory if I say you can say directly sodium sulfate reacts with barium chloride giving rise to sodium chloride plus barium sulfate. Now see here this is a lengthy process I'm saying sodium sulfate reacts with barium chloride to give rise to sodium chloride and barium sulfate but writing in this manner it is a lengthy process consuming much time you cannot understand how many atoms of sodium are participating or how many atoms are of sulfate is participating or how many atoms of barium are participating over here. 
Now, that is why to give you a clear information, these reactions have to be written in mathematical expression. Like, I have written over here, sodium sulfate reacts with barium chloride to give rise to barium sulfate plus sodium chloride. Now, see here. From this equation, it is clear that one atom of barium, why? Because nothing is there in presence uh, or nearby the barium. So, one barium atom reacts with one sulfur atom and four oxygen atoms giving rise to barium sulfate. It is saving your time and giving you a complete picture of the reaction, how the reaction is taking place. That is, how many atoms of barium, how many atoms of sulfur and how many atoms of oxygen are present in this reaction. When it is reacting with sodium chloride, it is giving rise to a new component called as barium sulfate. Now, the next question is, you may ask me, what is this chemical reaction? A chemical reaction is a substance that is when a component one component reacts with the second component two or more components it gives rise to a new substance. The substance which is participating in a chemical reaction it is called as reactant and those which is the result of the chemical reaction it is called as product. The reaction chemical reaction it is represented in the form of an arrow that is those components which are starting the chemical reaction, they are to return towards the left hand side of the reaction. They are called as reactants. If more than one reactant is participating, they are written by means of side by side putting an addition mark or a plus sign in between. Similarly, when a product is obtained, to one product it gives rise directly you can write as in the same manner if two products are obtained or more products are obtained keep a plus sign in between left side of the equation is reactant and the right hand side of the equation present is the product which is obtained due to the chemical reaction taking place between the two components now let us go for the equation of the reactants and the products which are given. The reactants and products are separated by means of an arrow. During the course of a chemical reaction, like you take example of hydrogen reacts with oxygen to give rise to water molecule. Now, one molecule of hydrogen means two atoms of hydrogen reacts with one molecule of oxygen that is two atoms of oxygen giving rise to one water molecule. Okay. So, here hydrogen is a gas right here at the base. Oxygen is a gas right at the base but the component which is obtained over here is a liquid, a colorless liquid. Now let us take another example, when this calcium oxide which is called as quick lime is dissolved in water, it is giving rise to a colorless solution called as calcium hydroxide which is insoluble in water that is why it is obtained in the form of precipitate. Precipitate is a substance which is insoluble in water or any solvent. Now, what we have observed over here is calcium oxide that is quicklime, when it is dissolved in water, it is giving rise to calcium hydroxide. This calcium hydroxide solution which is insoluble in water is called as the, uh, the component or the substance which is used for the whitewash purposes. Now, look here. Calcium oxide a solid, water a liquid giving rise to a solution which is semi solid in nature or a precipitate is obtained in this. Now when this calcium oxide is dissolved in water, 
it is emitting some amount of heat energy therefore this reaction is called as an exothermic reaction exothermic reactions are those reactions where the amount of heat energy is released by the substance when it is dissolved in the solvent and endothermic reactions are those reactions which is being completed with the absorption of heat energy like you take example of boiling of milk to boil milk you have to supply heat energy in the form of flame so when flame is added means the reaction is taking place with the taking in or consumption of heat energy such a reactions are called as endothermic reactions so based on the heat absorbed or released chemical reactions are divided into two types one is an endothermic reaction the other one is an exothermic reaction endothermic reactions are the reactions which are taking place with the liberation or absorption of heat energy like you take example of cooking of food cooking of food is an example of endothermic reaction endo in the sense taking in or consuming therm means the temperature or the heat and the reaction now calcium cooking of food is an example simple example of endothermic reaction and the reaction between calcium oxide that is quick lime and water which is releasing the heat energy or liberating the heat energy it is an exothermic reaction exo means moving out therm means the temperature or the heat means the chemical reactions which involve the liberation of heat energy such a kind of reactions are called as exothermic reactions till now we have discussed about the chemical reactions how they are changing means how a reactant is getting converted to a product now let us see the changes or the chemical reaction taking place in terms of a chemical equation a chemical equation is a mathematical representation of a chemical reaction now let us take an example of the equation or the reaction between calcium carbonate and giving rise to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide now suppose if i am writing the reaction of calcium carbonate which on heating gives rise to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide from this you are just getting the information that a reaction is taking place when calcium carbonate is heated giving rise to a new product that is calcium oxide and carbon dioxide now you are unable to design or de uh, determine that when a calcium carbonate is heated how many moles or atoms or the molecules of calcium co oxide is obtained or how many molecules of carbon dioxide is obtained so this can be very best explained by means of a mathematical equation or the representation which is called as a chemical equation now from this equation we can say that one atom of calcium one atom of carbon and three atoms of oxygen comprises calcium carbonate this on heating gives rise to one molecule of calcium oxide plus one molecule of carbon dioxide now see here at the base of oxygen three is present which indicates that three atoms of oxygen are participating one carbon atom because nothing no subscript is given over here so one carbon atom is present and one calcium atom is present and nothing is there in presence or in front of the calcium carbonate and the coefficient means the coefficient is one over here which on heating gives rise to one mole of calcium oxide why one mole of calcium oxide because nothing is present in present in front of the calcium oxide the coefficient is 1 and one mole of carbon dioxide means the coefficient is 1 so the overall reaction is calcium carbonate on heating gives rise to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide the reactants and the products are separated by means of an arrow the head part of the arrow represents the product or facing towards the product and the tail part of the product uh, arrow facing towards the reactant 
at the base of the calcium carbonate or the reactant i have written s in the bracket which represents it is a solid and here at the base i have written g which indicates a gas means in a chemical equation if there is a difference in the physical state of the reactant or product then you have to specify it in the form of a alphabets in the which is written at the subscript in the form of symbol then the upward arrow sign represents that the gas is obtained which is being evaporated or liberated now let us go for the second equation hydrogen reacts with oxygen to give rise to water so hydrogen reacts with oxygen here i have written g which indicates it is a gas gives rise to water l at the base or subscript i have written which indicates it is a liquid next sodium chloride on reacting with barium sulfate gives rise to sodium sulfate and barium sodium sodium chloride barium sulfate and sodium chloride so the equation is nacl means one mole of sodium chloride reacts with one mole of barium sulfate to give rise to one mole of sodium sulfate and one mole of barium chloride here i have written the downward arrow the downward arrow represents that barium chloride is obtained in the form of insoluble solid which is insoluble in water that is it is obtained in the form of precipitate now let us learn how to balance a chemical equation according to the law of conservation of mass or energy energy or mass can neither be created nor it can be destroyed but it can be converted into other form let us take the example of reaction between hydrogen and oxygen giving rise to water now in the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen reacts with oxygen atom to give rise to water molecule the substance is new the component or the product which is obtained over here is a new product without destroying the hydrogen and oxygen this is according to the law of conservation of mass now let us learn what is a balanced chemical equation a balanced chemical equation is an equation which tells about the number of atoms presents towards the chemical reaction is it same towards the product side that is the number of atoms participating in a chemical reaction that is the reactants is equal to the number of atoms present towards the product side if the same two are same then such a chemical reaction is called as a balanced chemical equation or balanced chemical reaction now let us take the example of reaction between hydrogen and oxygen when you are balancing the oxygen reaction the very first step is write down the skeletal equation means hydrogen reacts with oxygen to give rise to water molecule here we are not representing anything about the number of atoms towards the reactant side or the number of product side next step is balancing of the hydrogen atoms here we have seen that in the reactant side the number of hydrogen atoms are 2 and the number of hydrogen atoms towards the product side is 2 means hydrogen got balanced now coming with respect to the oxygen atom two oxygen atoms are present in the reactant side but one oxygen atom is present towards the product side means the equation is not balanced so first balance the hydrogen atoms when you take two in or keep two in front of the hydrogen molecule it becomes 2h2o then the hydrogens got balanced then going for the oxygen atom o2 that is two atoms of oxygen atom are present towards the reactant side if you look at the product side two oxygen atoms are present now hydrogens got balanced oxygen got balanced which indicates the balanced equation means the equation is balanced now now let us or you can write this equation as 2h2 plus o2 gives 